Whee! I'm back. Defeated COVID. Good to have you back. Um, you. Talking of which, your own CC recommends is back with the biggest and best cycling products that you need to know about this month. We've got wheels, clothing, helmets, and a beautiful bike to boot. That's alongside some top quality buying advice that you need to see before you invest any money. Mm. Well, hey, Becca. Long time no see uh, for both of us, actually. Yeah, how's, we've not been here a couple of months, but we're back. How's growing the human? Uh, hard, harder than expected. Yeah, really? Slight challenge. Yeah. Um, but still cycling, just about getting yeah. on the turbo at 32 weeks pregnant now. Third trimester well underway. Uh, stack height stem spaces like this. That offends me deeply. Hopefully we can get a, a nice little insert picture there. How are the 6XL bibs Yeah, going fitting for well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give it give in a lot of pancake room <laughs> yeah less room for pancakes now the baby's oh. taking over but you know what does the baby want today some. is it donuts today? <laughs> probably is yeah his baby donuts? needs donuts yeah <laughs> Right, so we've got back to the video that you're tuning in for. We've got a lovely selection of products in this month's Road CC Recommends. There's also the regular features of the Cafe of the Month, a route that you should definitely go and take a look at if you're ever in the vicinity, and some top buying advice about one of the most popular upgrades to make. Becca, should we uh, dive in? Yeah, let's. Uh, well, the specialised S-Works Prevail 2 vent is a better ventilated version of the company's top-end S-Works Prevail 2. It's cool and comfortable, and you get safety technologies that could help you out should you come off. So I really liked the previous version, and I'm a big fan of this one too. The difference is with the vent that specialisers use these kind of like aramid beams to make, well, the vents are absolutely huge now. Uh, personally, I don't know why they didn't just make this a Prevail 3, because who buys a vented helmet that doesn't want more venting? Anyway, it's comfortable, it's as safe as you can get with the MIPS. Uh, yeah, really nice high-end helmet. Vel 7 litre seat pack also really impressed us, boasting quality construction, a user friendly design and good stability on the bike. This is definitely one to look at if you're planning a longer riding trip this summer. Yeah, we know what a UK summer can bring. So it is <laughs> nice do. to have uh, the knowledge that the boat material that Vel uses to make the bag is also waterproof, um, seeing as the bag mm. is going to be right in the firing line of uh, road spray. That's good news for whatever you're packing inside. The purge valve makes it easy to squeeze any air from the bag when rolling it up and the two straps to compress the bag are on a loop so they pull tight but don't have any excess dangle. No one likes dangle. Um, the area of the pack closest to the seat post has the most reinforcement and the strong material forms like a box section. So this is great um, for packing in heavier items like tools and CO2 cartridges, uh, leaving you with room for more uh, the pliable end of the bag for uh, like squashy items like clothing. Would you take this on a bike packing trip though, Liam? I mean, a rider of us going to get our hair dryers in that. <laughs> really, that's a cordless um, a travel, straight like travel Dyson one? travel straighteners. Like we could probably. Well, Have yeah, you got that new thing? That yeah, curls. but I think we should move on. I don't think it's yeah. going to fit. <laughs> Uh, we are joking, of course. Both of us are very mm. hardy cyclists that love nothing more than heading out in grim weather. So the Endura Pro SL three season jacket would be perfect for us, right? No, it's probably not a product I'm going to need right now. Um, I've definitely spent the winter indoors on the turbo trailer for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, but if you're bonkers enough to relish sideways rain, which some are, of course, then you'll appreciate the clever shaping, quality construction and attention to detail that this jacket brings. So in full winter mode, a Prima Lofshi lay clips into the jacket via three poppers and that keeps your core nice and warm even on very cold rides so you can use this down to about minus two with just a thermal base layer and about minus four if you put a jersey on top of that too remove the gilet and the jacket can cope with double figure temperatures it'll cover you up to 12 degrees c with just a short sleeve jersey um, and you can expect to stay comfortable up to around 16 degrees c with uh, vents open too so that is really ideal for like october through to april around here yeah the fit is great too and you don't feel like you're wearing a stupidly bulky jacket 
Oh, I tell you what, I hate feeling like the Michelin Man on a winter ride with all that clothing on. Let me tell you about feeling like the Michelin Man. <laughs> yeah. I can't even get a winter coat zipped up right now. Oh, but, you know, I'll, anyway, I'll, I think I'll, I'll deal with my, <laughs> my issues. Uh, more snuggly kit now with the Albion Three Season Tights. These are warm, comfortable, water resistant offering everything you could possibly want from a pair of bib tights to fend off the worst of the UK's winter weather. The fabric consists of a mixture of panels, each serving a purpose specific to their location. A mid-weight thermal fabric around the waist and thigh keeps you warm without getting too hot, while windproof panels at the knee protect the all-important area from chilling at speed. Below this, there's a lighter weight Roubaix backed section covering the lower legs, and at the ankle area, a silicon gripper keeps this firmly in place. Uh, so the material actually has a DWR coating, which means that it will keep out light rain and road spray. Though I'm sure as a good cyclist, you've got mud guards on your bike for winter. I'm sure everyone has, yeah. I haven't. I've just got a big yeah. sack high and a turbo trainer, but Fair anyway, enough, enough about me. <laughs> uh, next up with that, we've uh, got our route of the month. Let's take a look. This month, we're heading down to the new forest for a great gravel loop. You'll often hear it said you don't get proper gravel riding in the UK, but in the New Forest you can ride for hours on fantastic graded trails through ancient woodland and open heaths. The hard packed surfaces in the area run fast and dry all year round too, even when it's really wet. There's loads of wildlife to see, roaming ponies, deer and even pigs at the right time of year. A while back we tried a winter overnight around the forest and that was a lot of fun but there's so much great scenery around the area that it's well worth being able to see it. This route heads out from Lyndhurst and does a loose figure of eight around the forest taking in some of the best trails and views. Two thirds of it is off road so most of the time you can forget about traffic, just concentrate on having a good time on your bike. Oh, a lovely one from the New Forest. Um, and that would be lovely for a weekend ride, but one bike that is more suited to the daily urban commute is the Tenways CGO600. Made in Lithuania and then distributed from Holland, Tenways might not be a brand that you've come across before, but in the CGO600, they have a sleek city e-bike with a smooth motor and a gate belt drive system that we always love to see. The motor is not one that our reviewer had come across before, but they were suitably impressed. The harder you push, the more power you get, basically. It really is a very sophisticated feeling ride. It's nice to ride without the power on too, and the belt drive doesn't feel too different to a regular chain drive. The 16.11 kilogram weight also helps in this regard, and also if you need to carry it up steps. Well, for me, Becca, honestly, the belt drive just makes so much sense on a bike like this. Yep, no maintenance. Oh, and no oil stains on your jeans or fourth <laughs> cap tats. It's Look always good. <laughs> okay, inspiring our buying advice this month is the Hunt 36 Carbon Wide Aero Wheel Set, which is among the best bang for your buck options that you can get for your rim brake bike. These 36mm deep rims measure 27mm wide externally and 19mm wide internally offering near enough the maximum width you can comfortably get away with on a rim brake road bike. So the 36 carbon wide aeros excel on longer and steeper climbs while on flat roads the 36 millimeter rim depth results in stable if slightly unspectacular speed. The stability though is an asset on the descent. The lack of texture in the brake track means that in the wet the pads can take just a millisecond longer to bite if you haven't used them for a while you know and suddenly you're pulling on the brakes mm -hmm. in an emergency but uh, there is plenty of power when they do bite. At 749 they are a very tempting upgrade. And if you hadn't guessed, this month's buying advice is all about that big upgrade that loads of us look to make to our bikes. It's a jazzy set of carbon wheels. So off to Anna on the tech team to talk you through buying a set. Thanks guys. I think this area is absolutely in need of some sound advice because I know the feeling of spending endless hours trying to choose a new set of carbon hoops. There's a little bit to cover, so we'll jump right in we're gonna look at rim depth and internal width as these are both key performance factors. Rim depth is quite simple. The deeper the wheel, the faster it should be in a straight line. That's of course a very basic rule of thumb, but you can use rim depth to gauge whether a wheel set is going to be right for you. If you like climbing lots of hills, then going for a shallower wheel set between 24 and 40 millimeters 
it's going to offer the low weight you want for punchy climbs and accelerations. For a mix of riding, a 40 to 60 mm wheel set keeps most of these weight savings but throws in some very tempting aero performance that will help you out on the flats. This depth also strikes a nice balance for aesthetics. And then, if you're just going to be riding on the flat, a super deep wheel set up to 80 mm is going to help you go as fast as possible. But as you go deeper, you tend to get pushed about more by crosswinds. Just one thing to bear in mind. Internal rim width is also really important. Most disc and rim brake wheels now come with 19 to 21 mm internal widths. Some disc brake road wheels even go up to 23 mm and wheels designed for gravel go even further. The idea is to optimise the shape of the tyre that you're going to be running. 19mm rim whips work really well with tyres around 25mm. Then, if you jump up to a wheel boasting a 21mm internal width, you'll find that tyres between 26 to 30mm sit with a lovely profile. Above this, larger gravel tyres really benefit from a wider internal width as it prevents the tyre from forming a light bulb shape when inflated. The wider rims allow you to run lower pressures to give you more grip while also getting improved rolling resistance. To give you an example, our preference for road riding is a 21mm wide rim with a 28mm tyre. That generally results in a fast, comfortable and grippy setup, though your riding situation and weight will have an effect on that. And then, if you're on rim brakes, you'll also need to think about the braking surface. Some wheels use a flat surface, which, in the dry at least, gives the most power in my experience. It must have something to do with the contact patch on the brake pad. Other brands will use what is often known as a basalt surface. Think of sandpaper here, and you won't be surprised to learn that these tend to be the best for initial bite. And then finally, some brands such as Campagnolo and Zip have used groove surfaces on their brake tracks. These grooves are designed to help clear water from the braking surface, and so they tend to be very good for riders that need wet weather braking performance. In terms of how much money you need to save up, good wheels are available from around the £500 mark, but we think the sweet spot sits at just under £900. If you have more money to spend, you can drop a cool three grand on a set of hoops, but just don't expect them to be significantly faster than the £900 ones. Right, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much for that buying advice, Anna. Now, the cyclist cookbook by former Team Sky nutritionist Nigel Mitchell is a brilliant resource for fueling a hungry cyclist that is living more of a normal life than a pro. Now, what we mean by that is that the recipes are really nicely balanced between performance nutrition that you might want to use after a big training session or you know, the night before an event, and those meals that are just a bit more basic, but the family are going to love. Yeah, let's be honest, you need some of these easy recipes because walking around town trying to find a niche ingredient is fine occasionally, but it can get frustrating and really put you off the recipe. Yeah, that's one thing that is great about this book. Uh, there aren't too many ingredients that leave you wondering where you're gonna find them. Um, and most use just a handful of ingredients, which helps cut down on prep time. Yeah, it, it is good because I do, as I say, I get easily yeah. put off motivation to cook something yeah. comprehensive. So this is right on my street. Oh, prep is the worst. I, I just want to eat the food. Right, if you're, if you're gonna eat your way through this cookbook, and I strongly suggest that you do, you'll probably need to burn off a few calories and training with a power meter such as the Giant Power Pro is the most effective way to do that. Very nice segue, Liam. Here's one of my best. <laughs> Good work. Essentially, what you're getting is the same thing as what you'd get from the likes of Stages and 4i. The main difference is that the Giant system uses a rechargeable battery, whereas both the competitor systems use a simple 2032 coin cell on either side. So the cranks are dual Bluetooth and AMP Plus compatible, so they should work with pretty much any GPS head unit or indoor training system that you care to mention. To be honest, there's not a huge amount to say about this power meter. It gave us consistent and reliable data and it's based on a Shimano crank set that we love, so your shifting is still going to be brilliant. 
I, I really like this. I just think it's a very neat design. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on and the Specialized S-Works 7 lace shoes impressed us with their comfort, stiff sole and, well, gorgeous looks. It's Come important. Uh, Lace-up shoes are so annoying if your fingers get absolutely frozen in the winter or you want to adjust the shoe tension while riding, but it has to be said, they look lovely. They really do. <laughs> they do indeed. And these should stay looking lovely as Specialized has included metal eyelets for four of the six pairs of lace holes to prevent any tearing of the upper. And there's an elasticated band that runs across the tongue to provide, you know, a secure place to you know, tuck away those laces. The upper combines engineered mesh with areas of TPU, and despite not being very thick at all, it certainly doesn't feel like it stretches when you pull up. The upper, well, that is also supple and flexible enough that various foot shapes can get um, an excellent fit. I guess if you're a fan of the classic look, then these are mm. well worth considering. Uh, on now to our final product before we take a look at a lovely cafe that you really should go to visit. The No Pins Endurance Women's Bib Ties are a great fitting option for winter endurance riding with a very good seat pad for the price. A hydrophobic coating helps protect against road spray and a soft fleecy lining keeps you very warm indeed. Sounds nice and cosy to be honest. Absolutely. Um, the main reason for this is that the tights use a Roubaix lined fabric that's soft and fleecy inside. The fabric also has a generous amount of stretch allowing you to move very freely. TA Sport provides the Armadillo Endurance Pad which is a well specced option for the price. It provides excellent support with no pressure points or chafing on long base mile rides. Uh, but for now we visited the New Forest once and let's go back now for the cafe of the month on the route. If you're going to the New Forest to try out our route of the month or just to explore the area, then Lyndhurst is an ideal base for exploring. The wood cyclery is right in the centre of town and the bike shop is a real hub for riding in the New Forest. The cafe has only recently opened but it's a great place for a mid-ride stop or a coffee and cake at the end of your day in the saddle. There's a big emphasis on local produce, including the coffee from Bad Hand in Bournemouth who roast ethically sourced beans in an old fire station. It's not the biggest cafe, so if you come in with a club or in a big group, it's best to phone ahead so they can be ready to welcome you. And of course, if you've broken or forgotten something, there's a fully stocked shop right on site. That does look like a nice cafe. Mm. Yeah. We're going to have to go to the new forest. It's not too far away, yeah. Uh, uh, now, it is a bit of a shame that we can only give out one product of the month award because our next item was absolutely fantastic. The Factor Ostro Van Frame Set is a brilliant way to start a custom build. Well, you know, if you can afford it. Its stiffness and geometry result in a bike that is super fast. It tracks through high-speed corners beautifully and is comfortable enough for long days in the saddle. You were quite smitten with this frame set, weren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm rarely quite so sad to say goodbye to a test bike. But Are we going to get a montage? Well, let's focus on your the love. good times that we had together. Factor <laughs> um, intends this frame for racing and the Ostro Vam is easily stiff enough to handle, well, anything that I could throw at it. Uh, the position is long and low, and the weight is bang on for those uh, kind of do-it-all frames. A nice short wheelbase is also great for responsive handling. You actually built the bike up from the frame set, and you were saying how easy it was for an internally rooted bike. Yeah, it, it suggests that Factor has actually put some thought into it, and the ride is equally impressive. So the stiffness of the huge bottom bracket, chunky down tube, and deep chainstays results in a bike that loves to sprint. And over broken ground, the back end provides just enough comfort for kind of those longer mm -hmm. days in the saddle. Well, that just leaves our product of the month. Should I do a drum roll? Yeah, go on. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. It's the Hunt 44 Aerodynamic Assist Carbon Disc Wheel Set. Hey. Uh, yeah, so we had a bit of a chat about this in the tech team, and really, we felt that the Hunt wheels at £879 were probably more relevant to most of you at home than the five grand frame set. But it's more the performance that you get for your money that's really impressed us here. The wide rim is stable in crosswinds and fast on mixed terrain. They set up tubeless very easily and just float over harsh roads. So this particular set of 44mm deep carbon wheels strikes a balance between flatland speed, handling and climbing ability very well. As all-rounders, they're very capable and with a quick tyre swap they can handle cyclocross and light gravel duties too. 
What surprised me most when I reviewed the wheels was the smoothness over broken surfaces. The 20 mm internal width kind of surely helps with this floaty ride, and the width means that they're optimized for between a 25 and a 28 mm tire. You can run your 23s if you're still kind of clinging to them, and I fitted some 33 mm cyclocross tires too. The acceleration is plenty fast enough from uh, slow speeds. They lose out slightly to a properly deep wheel on fully flat rides, but if you're looking to cover a range of riding, I'd say this is an excellent option. Well, last month's recommends was absolutely jam-packed, so you should check that out because there's a ton of great stuff to have a look at, yeah. isn't there? And seeing as our Becca here is, well, quite, quite pregnant, <laughs> quite. Um, our latest bump and ride video is well worth a look. I have to say that I've loved watching them and I'm not even pregnant. It's taught me many things. I'm going to test you now. What have you, what have you learned? What have you taken away from the series? First off, <laughs> six XL bibs are well worth the investment. Hang on, apparently. hang on. I think it's it's three or four three XL. Or four. It's not Fair six. Enough. I mean, that's... Uh, and also, <laughs> a serious one is that trimester two is actually like the time that most women feel able to go out and exercise it's the a bit more. It's the glow. Is it the yeah, no, is it Does it I come with that sound myth. effect as well? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a myth, it's a myth. But you it can is. ride a lot more, yeah. Oh, awesome. um, but seriously, for a minute, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone here at Road CC for allowing me to share that journey on the channel because, well, you know, it has been overwhelming to hear other people going through what I'm going through, really benefiting from the advice. So, thank you. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Well, that is all from us for this month's Road CC Recommends, isn't it? We'll be back yeah. next time. And if you liked it, give us a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. From me and Liam, goodbye. <laughs>